Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and this is the guide section. As always, the shameless plug at the beginning. Please consider subscribing to the channel and leave a positive comment down below if this here adds value to you. Now to our topic for today, which is the class Sparks. Yep, you have heard uh, correct. Uh, they actually get a skill tree, so it's uh, also worth looking into them. Long War in particular um, had seen a rise of uh, the mechanical units, so Sparks Sparks become easier to acquire in the early game and uh, definitely are one of the area, um, units that you might want to consider adding into your squad. They don't scale as well as uh, the other soldiers, but they do offer a lot of survivability, which in my uh, book makes uh, them very, very use, uh, uh, usable. They come with a lot of standard abilities, um, namely overdrive uh, that allows them to take three shots. Then they get a bit, uh, which is um, essentially a hacking drone that later can heal as well. And uh, the uh, standard immunities that um, uh, mechanical units um, anyways have. And you can already see why those can come in handy at the beginning. Uh, specifically, the immunity to fire and poison can be handy in the first couple of months. Um, and even later, it's, it's not bad. Good. Let's take a look at uh, the preferred skills, so to speak. Um, since they cannot use any cover, um, my personal take on them would be to increase their defenses and just use them as fire support. However, that being said, you can also use them more as a sniper slash damage dealer at the expense of some of its survivability. Aspirant, which is the first level, allows them to either get ad adaptive aim, which means that the uh, successive shots from uh, overdrive will have a, a higher chance to hit. So that would be the go-to if you are um, trying to uh, use it more as a sniper, a damage dealer, and less as a defense. Formidable, I've mentioned that on many, many other occasions, give, um, is just an incredibly good package for, uh, for a single talent. Two bonus hit points, 50% less from explosives are very very helpful and therefore would be my go-to um, unless you want to use it as a damage dealer finally combat awareness <clears throat> offers them uh, kind of an overwatch type of uh, role and that's really what the war machine um, uh, uh, yeah skill tree is about similar to the specialist and the ranger that also do have overwatch trees um, i would say that this class does not necessarily um, excel at overwatching and overwatching still remains to be a suboptimal uh, mechanic. I much rather uh, do something else with uh, the uh, the classes because it's just stronger, so to speak. Um, Knight, which is the second rain, uh, rank, allows you to either get Rainmaker, which um, will give your um, rockets that you do have as, as a standard as well, plus two damage and an increased area of effect can be quite useful if you're going for a pure combatant. Um, adaptive aim plus Rainmaker definitely makes sense um, if you just want to deal damage and not um, go for a supportive slash tanky role. Uh, body shield is good. I would give it kind of a B rating. <coughs> uh, it allows you against a single opponent to get um, a 20 aim uh, penalty uh, for that opponent and uh, much less chance that that opponent will critically hit you. Uh, so it is a free ability, uh, thus making it good. But um, the Shredder ability, on the other hand, probably outshines both of the others. I personally have uh, mentioned it a couple of times that you would want to have as many um, uh, soldiers as possible in uh, the shredder slash um, shredding abilities uh, abil invest into those abilities is what I wanted to say uh, because you will run into a lot of enemies with um, forms of um, yeah armor and this year is one of the few ways of dealing with the arm more efficiently. So um, I much rather use them as a tanking slash um, fire support class. Shredder, definitely the way to go on night. Uh, Cavalry, uh, Cavalier uh, gives them either a strike, which is a nice add-on. Uh, the strike is pretty precise and highly powerful, has a cooldown though. Um, and this gives you an option when you are out of ammunition or have um, uh, don't have overdrive available uh, to 
uh, kind of do something on top of it. Bulwark, uh, in my perspective, is pretty damn good, um, and therefore I would recommend using it. You gain an extra point of armor, and you automatically provide high cover, so no more utilization of um, uh, of an ability in order to do that. Uh, you can um, combine that nicely uh, with other um, uh, with other operatives. Imagine, for instance, uh, you were to uh, move up um, to an enemy, uh, basically shoot him point blank, um, and you know that you can't finish him. Your shinobi can run up to you, stand next to you, kill uh, the enemy, and when they cannot move away, uh, the bulwark feature still means that they are in full cover. Same goes for um, uh, XCOM operatives that might be caught in the open. You can always put uh, the mech in front of it. Please be aware, though, that mm, the enemy is likely to use explosives, which uh, is where Formidable comes into play again, because if you only take 50% of them, it's actually quite good. Hold targeting is another supportive ability that basically sets up others uh, to hit uh, their targets better. Um, it's not it's not bad, um, but I would probably rather give it a B to C tier um, instead of uh, the other um, abilities. Vanguard here, um, as the next rank, uh, gives you either Intimidate, um, which means whenever you're being attacked, uh, there is a chance that you are intimidating uh, the enemy. I'm not a big f uh, fan of those particular ab abilities because I don't want to be um, attacked in the first place. The game is still Alpha Strike uh, based, so you want to deal with the enemy before they deal with you. That being said, Intimidate has its util uh, ut uh, utilization. Um, there are a couple of techniques, specifically in uh, Long War 2. Uh, when you go into um, non-infiltrated um, supply runs, uh, where the idea is to generally have a, tank, a tanky spark in front, um, having um, uh, having it use intimidate, uh, bulwark, body shield, and formidable, so complete kind of tank, and uh, on top of it, giving it. Uh, eight protocol every single round, so having two specialists that chain eight protocol, plus putting um, uh, smoke on top of it, so that you essentially reduce the to hit chance uh, of the enemy to zero, um, and therefore then use um, uh, snipers uh, to to just uh, return fire um, with squad size. Now, whilst in theory that works well. In, in practical terms, I've noticed uh, more often that the AI now has picked up that strategy and that with Long War of the Chosen, the strategy is no longer as valid as it had been before, specifically since larger packs begin to spawn in your area. Uh, so um, uh, Intimidate historically had been good. I would say it now fell off a bit uh, in its usability. Repair, on the other hand, uh, gives uh, the bit here the ability to repair, which is absolutely fantastic. I like healing. Um, I will always be a huge proponent of it because it allows you to even send in the mech half damaged and just heal yourself with one of the two charges to begin with. The mech is fully functional, uh, completely eliminating any form of downtime. There you go. Uh, such a good ability. Sentinel, two reaction shots. Yes, okay for an Overwatch build, but I mentioned already that they kind of be uh, tend to be a little bit inferior. Paladin as the next rank allows you to either get Bombard, which um, releases a, a pretty uh, powerful blast. Um, the um, ability itself is good in combination with Rainmaker just to, uh, to um, get some more damage out there. Um, it is something if you want to de uh, use uh, the mech as a damage dealer, that uh, that's the way to go. Uh, channeling field um, uh, allows you that every time when you're targeted, um, your energy is challenged into your uh, cannon. The energy is unleashed with an extended shot. So it's a bit uh, the logical consequence of that tank build that I was uh, talking about, uh, where you uh, would uh, regain more and more energy. And then finally, cool under pressure, uh, which allows you to um, go for um, go for even better Overwatch shots. Now, in terms of where I would stand on this, 
I would probably go with Bombard um, in the standard build. Um, the normal gun and being shot at um, is, this, is the same kind of concept uh, like Intimidate. I don't want to be shot at to begin with. If it happens, yes, I want to be able to withstand it. But the idea of the way that I'm playing uh, the Sparks is that they should be sturdy. They should be a frontline tank. And whenever there is um, no ability that helps them to fulfill that role, I'm looking for utility. And believe it or not, but explosion and damage <coughs> can serve that utility function. Um, I would probably not go for cool under pressure unless uh, you're going for a complete Overwatch build. Uh, champion tier, uh, tier second uh, last one. Uh, either Wrecking Ball, while Overdrive is active, you can uh, run through walls, which is um, quite nice um, to to basically free up um, uh, free up uh, the um, VIPs in some cases, create a new path wall, and so on and so forth. Maybe even remove cover, so that's not bad. Uh, second one, damage control. After taking get damage, you gain two armor until the end of the round, which is fantastic from a, a tanking perspective. And finally, Nova releases a blast of energy, damaging all uh, nearby units. It's a bit like the um, uh, damaging blast that the sector pods are doing. Uh, no cost or cooldown, but consecutive Novas uh, will also damage the spark. So um, that is fine in terms of just um, uh, dealing damage to nearby uh, units. The problem um, here is uh, oftentimes when, when I used that in the past, um, yes, if you are in a really pinched situation where you are out of almost out of um, actions, uh, you can release Nova after Nova and just uh, wear the enemies down. Um, to be in a spot where multiple enemies are adjacent to you and really um, use that ability is quite rare <clears throat> since enemies can move into cover. My take here in most of the cases would actually be damage control over Wrecking Ball. Wrecking Ball is a lot of utility. Damage control is just a lot of survivability. That, those two points of armor are nice because another um, quote-unquote tip here is um, if you're taking damage the first time and lose your actual armor, gaining two additional points of armor will just compensate for that and it will then counter future shredding as well. So that's just wonderful uh, because you want to keep your armor. Finally, Templar, highest rank, um, either Sacrifice, uh, which generally creates a protective field, reflects any attacks um, uh, against allies inside of that field towards you, which is um, uh, what uh, you can use in order to do those 0% supply runs. Also, you gain bonus armor defense while, uh, while active. If I uh, remember correctly, then that was a four or five rounds cooldown, so um, not uh, and not easy to replace, but if you need it, uh, that's a great ability. Impact fields um, reduces incoming damage uh, by 33% uh, for two turns. Uh, and then you have a six uh, turns cooldown. And finally, Hunter Protocol, um, uh, you have a chance whenever an enemy is uh, revealed to automatically take an overwatch shot. Clearly, the um, last ability is... Um, completely uh, dependent on how well you're doing an overwatch shot so that would be something for an overwatch build that i personally don't uh, like too much uh, for the other two i had uh, good experiences with uh, both of them sacrifice is good um, and impact fields is probably even more reliable if i'm not Completely wrong sacrifice was not even a six rounds cooldown, but even a once per mission usable item. I would need to look that up, but it doesn't matter. You will um, seldomly come more than once into a situation where you want to basically take on all of uh, the damage. Um, however, that can be a lifesaver, which is uh, for as an oh shit button together with uh, damage control and just overall bulwark uh, and formidable can be a really nice um, ability. Uh, the impact fields would be the other choice if you um, just want to continue tanking um, afterwards uh, because it's a flat 33% uh, reduction, which uh, if you think about it, is even stronger than 33% because it will first reduce the damage and then armor is applied. So it will um, uh, essentially the net damage that you are uh, taking will be even lower. 
Uh, what would be uh, the final build here? Formidable, probably into Shredder, into Bulwark, into Repair. Then I would use uh, Bombard because I don't like chan uh, channeling field too much. Damage control just to get that extra armor. Alternatively, Wrecking Ball depending on how the team uh, constellation is. And I would finish up with Impact Fields. Um, if the team needs uh, help, sacrifice could be an alternative. If I was to uh, go for a complete fire uh, maximum damage uh, type of build, I would probably go Adaptive Aim um, into Rainmaker. Uh, then I would uh, probably take Holo Targeting because the, uh, the mech... Uh, benefits from its own holo uh, uh, targeting uh, specifically if you use overdrive a lot i would um, then afterwards probably go for repair because it's a no-brainer uh, skill um, before then going into bombard uh, because um, it deals extra damage um, i would probably then skill uh, Nova, assuming that I could be healed, maybe with repair together, that's not the worst. Uh, the worst idea. Um, you know what? Damage control is probably too good in impact fields. So let me uh, say that again: adaptive aim into rainmaker into uh, holo targeting, then repair, then bombard, and still damage control into impact fields. Uh, those two will be helpful just to get some more survivability out there. So yeah, that's it. Uh, that's uh, the Spark build. Um, tell me if you uh, liked it and tell me what your experience with Sparks in general are. Up then, see you in the next uh, guide and bye-bye. Uh,